right. Start recording. Recording started. Fantastic. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation or around the world. Once again, you are listening to the VMware Communities Roundtable Podcast. This is podcast number 467. My name is Eric Nelson, and with me today, I have a very special guest, Ariel Sanchez. Ariel, welcome to the studio. Thank you so much, Eric. Yep. Uh, John is out at a customer site today, so he has his real day job to do. But it's great to have you here. I know we just picked you up because you were in town. So, uh, Ariel, you're a, Ariel. if you don't know Ariel, he's a crazy social media evangelist. He is in, like, the top 10 uh, VMware people to follow. There's, a, there's a, a URL out there somewhere that takes you through who are the k- key stakeholders on a weekly basis, and you're always in the top 10. Wow. So it's uh, fantastic to have you in the show. On the show today, we're going to be talking to Bill, uh, Bill Shetty. Uh, Bill Shetty is Director of Cloud Solutions, and uh, we're going to talk about his team, what he's been up to with regard to marketing cloud services, and then he's going to take us through uh, some stuff about how to manage your cloud services best using VMware tools on AWS, so that should be great. Uh, but before we get to Bill, I thought we would just uh, spend a little bit of time talking about the news, and uh, unlike December, January, where they're generally is no news this week there is tons of news because um, mobile world congress is going on and so we have announcements and announcements and more announcements um, but if we will we'll, we'll do those first then we'll get to uh, uh, Corey who's on the phone Corey Romero's uh, gonna talk about uh, the ever-shifting V expert uh, date that's going to go live when we do the announcements and we'll have to do a shout out to all the expert pros that are doing the voting uh, so let's get with the show should be fun uh, ariel as always great to have you here well I'm, I'm just very happy to be here i'm here for the ctoa conference uh i'm going to hear, be here the full week and just being able to sit here in this room is very like iconic so thank you so much oh no it's great it's great it's always fun to have community members here and you're just such an evangelist it's it's all it's just great to have you here because we just i just look at your tweets daily right so it's awesome so let's go to barcelona spain where mobile world congress is happening 2019 we have a bunch of announcements if you've been on social uh at&t selects vmware sd wan by velo cloud for uh for wan of 5g service so the Velo Cloud stuff looks like it's doing well on uh, SD WAN. We announced working with AT&T, Ericsson Teams with VMware on network transformation. Uh, we announced a deal with Ericsson, and VMware signed a global alliance agreement um, that will simplify deploying and running a combination of Ericsson applications and VMware's vCloud NFV platform for CSPs. So again, on another alliance, we did that. T Systems selects VMware Cloud on AWS uh, for hybrid cloud services. So a win with T Systems, uh, Vodafone, and VMware expand deployment of of um, uh, Vodafone expands its footprints with VMware Cloud's infrastructure to power its network and capture operational ag- uh, agility and cost efficiency. So again, just big announcements. But then there were a whole list of telco announcements as well, right? Yeah. In v- unveiling all kinds of different services um, from uh, VMware Smart Assurance, uh, which was announced uh, this week, um, uh, works on new carrier oriented advancements in VMware NSXT for the data center to uh, evolution of n- uh, networking in vCloud NFV. We had some serious announcements there. Um, expanding VMware Ready for NFV certified certifications. So, again, just, just the laundry list of announcements is just been all week long um, from VMware HCX uh, and, and so forth. There was a, so uh, again uh, the momentum around SD WAN with v, Velo Cloud as well as NF, NFV is just like uh, it, it just keeps going, right? A lot of people don't know how big we are in the telco NFV space, and I would love to see more V experts come out from that space. But yes, we are great. I think Pat was there, and and, and I think also at the RSA conference, so we're everywhere. Yeah, and they they made uh, more announcements on VMware Plus IoT Center. I mean, it's the day that uh, John White, who does a lot of our announcements, is gone, of course, right? And there we we could do a whole show just on. And I think last year we did a whole show just on uh, Mobile World Congress, and uh, you know we're just we're just hitting on all cylinders there. 
there. We have a huge booth there. Um, Sanjay Poonin is there. Pat is there. Everybody's you know on social, shaking hands, doing that. So pretty cool. Uh, lots of stuff going on, and and yeah, hitting on all cylinders when it comes to the networking space now and the mobile space, which is which is great for VMware, great for all of us in the ecosystem because it's just more business, more opportunity, and as as data centers transition into the the mobile space and apps out on the uh, front lines, this is this is a good place to be. Right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, very happy about that. Um, so that's that's the big announcements going on, and then we'll we'll swing by Mr. Romero to see how the how the experts doing, and have to shout out to all the pros that are doing the voting. So Corey, how's it going? Going great. Hey, just to clarify, the date for announcement has never changed. The only thing that that slipped was the date for when applications opened, because we were waiting for. Um, some, some things to happen. Yeah, I'm so just that giving you a hard time, dude. Um, oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure it was announcing that it was changing. I'm just anyway, still poking yeah. fun at the fact that I delayed it four months last year, and so I'm just going to constantly say that and try to blame it on you, not me. <laughs> like, like a boss. Right. So, yeah, we'll <laughs> totally. Next week. Uh, we'll, we'll have uh, the full announcement next week for... Um, for the expert, and we, we plan on having um, everything wrapped up uh, by Friday, uh, Tuesday-ish um, for final voting, and then we'll go through the um, rejects and defers, clean that up, and we'll have an announcement next week for, for um, the 2019 program. Great. So I'm looking Great. forward to that. Excited. All right. Well, good. Good. Uh, thanks to again. Shout out to all the pros that have been in there voting in the app, and uh, thanks to uh, Martin, who's uh, built the app and is managing that for, and helping us run the app. And uh, and everybody's in there. I just talked to my VP and uh, told him of Martin and Corey's work, and we're actually going to present it uh, at the at a VP staff, maybe even Robin staff, just how well that application works and how we've scaled out the program with all the V expert pros now voting. That this allows us to make the program bigger uh so again thanks to all the guys that are doing that work i know it's a lot of work going in and and reviewing apps and and thanks to everybody for doing better apps this year i know we had example apps we took uh we took uh tony foster's app and made it an example app so um again uh thanks to everybody that's doing that i'm excited to see what it is last year i think i cried when all the announcements went out so uh yeah, this year should be also an emotional moving moment for all of us, so happy about that. I, I just checked into the VXPRE Pro Slack, and Valdezir says we are down to 500 applications left, so we're already three quarters of the way. So yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. And it's kind of interesting because you, you, you do those counts, right? And you're like, it's like doing a university homework where you're like, okay, I got just got this, I got that. Yeah. If I can just make it another few hours, I can get down to 400 and then 300 and then 200. And you're fine. the whole team is finally down to like 50, and you're like, oh, my God, we're almost done. It is a big number. I tell people that, that um, people that don't run big programs, like when you're talking 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 numbers, it is a large number. It takes a while to just chunk through anything that's in the thousands, right? Uh, because you got to do them all. And so if you don't break it up into a large number of people, it's almost impossible uh, to scale out. But we're there and it's scaling and really excited about that. Now the BUs are engaged on the sub programs as well. I think we're adding some more sub programs. So, yeah. The experts, it's rocking and rolling. Very happy about that. Okay, getting to the show and getting to Mr. Shetty. So uh, bef uh, before I do that announcement, I will say that we have Bill Shetty. This is the first time in the podcast that we're actually going to do slides on the Facebook live stream. So Bill has slides. We're using a combination of Wirecast to do. We're doing talk shoe live on audio with people dialed in. Uh, we're doing Wirecast broadcasting to Facebook. We're recording to YouTube and we're using Zoom to grab Bill's desk and and his video camera feed to feed that in, which we're capturing on Wirecast that then gets um, gets live streamed out to Facebook. So, and, and I'm seeing the amount of viewers going up as we're saying this. So yeah. everybody knows where to find the video. That's right. So it's it is on the on the URL uh, facebook.com slash vmtn community. Uh, so hey guys out there, uh, we're, we're live streaming. You're there. You should wave, say hi to the camera, and then uh, we got Bill's slides out there. So with that, we we will get to uh, Bill. So Bill. Um, how's it going? Welcome to the VMware Community Podcast, and uh, uh, we see you on camera, so that that's a good thing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, how long you've been at VMware, and what have you done in the IT industry before you got here? 
Uh, <clears throat> Eric, well, thanks a lot. I, I appreciate you giving us time. Uh, it's a great honor to get on the podcast and talk to you and everybody out there. Um, so, first of all, thank you uh, for giving us some time. Great to have you um, here. No, thank you. Um, just a little bit about, I guess, uh, myself. I've, I've been here about three and a half years at VMware. Um, mostly on this project that I'll talk about today, which is the VMware Cloud Services, our, our set of SaaS-based services that are uh, that have been rolling out over the last couple of years. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've I've been in the industry, you know, it's close to 20 years now, I think. Um, most of the time, a lot of time spent at Cisco Systems. Um, so there as networking and, and uh, the product manager for a while. Did a snip and venture. Did a, quite a bit of uh, investing actually for about three years plus on uh, cloud, uh, uh, original cloud companies many years ago, like eight years ago. And then uh, uh, did a couple of startups and wound up here at VMware um, about three and a half years ago. Um, mostly was helping uh, uh, Guido Appenzeller, uh, who was one of the uh, uh, CTOs here. He recently left, uh, kind of start this and uh, move this forward. Uh, so that's a little bit of history about me. Nice, 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 and uh, and maybe we should uh, talk a little bit about um, what, what you know. What are the product sets that uh, that that you own, and then we can talk a little bit about your team. What is uh, what is uh, cloud advocacy in general in your team, and what are you doing there? So why don't you take us a little bit about your team and what you're what you're doing? What are you advocating? Sure. Uh, so we should probably. I don't know if the slides we just switch over to the slide for like two seconds and I'll switch out. Sure. Um, so what is uh, VMware a native public cloud advocacy? Uh, I think one of the things that we are, you know, we want to get out there, right, and one of our main objectives is to make the ecosystem, our customers, and everybody out there that VMware is not just about vSphere and about on-prem anymore, right? we have been barreling down this path of actually supporting um, the native public clouds, like Amazon, Azure, Google. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the purchases that we've made over the last few years. And you know, the, the objective of my team is to effectively become experts on the public cloud to help customers really understand what are some of the best practices when they get into the public cloud, help them use some of our tools or other tools in the ecosystem. Um, to get a better operational sense of uh, operational process of actually managing their day-to-day -day life, right, when it comes to utilizing the public cloud. Um, and they, they may be hybrid, um, but our specific focus is on Amazon, Azure, and Google, and we also um, focus on applications, right, and knowing the technology behind what an application is, because the unit of measure inside of the cloud it's not necessarily about the resources that you're using, but about that component that goes in and gets managed. And that component is really the service or the application that's being deployed. Um, and obviously, we're we're going to continuously help improve our SaaS-based products that are out there. So that's, that's a little bit of a quick background on what my team is. Great, um, great, great, great. So that that makes sense. And. Uh, and you, you definitely have moved into the land of on social channels, uh, running meetups, uh, engaging with people. So how many people on your team, and then what are their roles as, I think you've relabeled them the team of evangelists and cloud service evangelists. What's the type of you know things that they're going to be doing out in the channels? Are they going to be doing presentations? Are they on social? Are they blogging? Uh, what's your kind of ways to go to market and, and, and help the ecosystem? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, so uh, if you could uh, cut back over to a share, uh, what I'd like to just quickly put off for a couple seconds is, um, as evangelists, you know, <laughs> our job is to produce content, content that is effectively based on not just VMware components, but about um, components like Amazon Azure and all the other application bits. And we actually talk about different problem sets and issues that are going on in operational and management processes around the public cloud in, in relation to, uh, to, um, to applications. And, and there are about six members of our team, including myself. We have a site called beyondvirtual.io where we are now starting to publish all of our blogs. Um, 
And the people that are on the team, some of you guys may be familiar with them. Um, you know, they used to be former SCs here at VMware also. Uh, it's myself. Uh, we have Dan Nelson, um, <clears throat> who specializes in cloud native, uh, specifically on Kubernetes and server uh, serverless. We have uh, Sean Adell, who is heading up kind of the uh, Cloud Health Plus Plus and really around uh, public cloud operations. Um, we have Prabhu Brady, who is uh, really focusing on also the public cloud components, but specifically around observability of applications and observability of uh, public cloud components. Um, and then we have Tim Davis, who is um, focused on CI, CD, and kind of that GitOps and DevOps processes that are occurring out there on a regular basis and focusing on that. And then we have Shri, uh, who recently joined a couple of months ago, and he is our security expert, so to speak, and, and been looking at and we'll be starting to post component of uh, uh, solutions around the public cloud and what security means in in the public cloud and what to do and what not to do. Well, I, I got to say that uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Sanjay... Uh, Ariel, jump in a minute, but uh, uh, Dan Ellison, I work with Dan all the time. He's been on the podcast. He's like all over on uh, Kubernetes and uh, doing presentations, PowerShells, I mean, sorry, Power Sessions at VMworld, AWS Sessions. So he's uh, actively engaged. And Tim Davis is just like a machine. He's like Ariel. Like he's just everywhere, you know, great. He's, he, he's always liking my stuff, retweeting, engaging on all type of things. Now, granted, I, I help run the, the code program, so I Obviously, Dan and Tim are two of the people that I would interact with all the time. So, shout out to them, uh, Bill, for for uh, you know g having two powerhouses in the space that I operate in. So that that's great. And uh, I don't know the others, but um, I'm g excited to get to know them. I, I I for one know very well Prabhu Bharati. I met him when I lived in New York, and I know Sean O'Dell from his high, from his days when he was in Arkin. You have an all-star cast here as your team. And I really think that your role as uh, as you know, helping customers adapt to this new world is really important. So I'm really happy to see that you have people that we are very familiar with and that we we cherish in the community. Yeah. Uh, thank you. No, I mean uh, honestly, I, I'm, uh, the team is amazing, right? Up and down the uh, the board, uh, you know, we've come together over a couple of years, and uh, it's it's a uh, it's an awesome group to, to, to be with, to be honest, right? So uh, a shout out to all of them, right, for all the work they've been putting in. Right, right. Now. And this explains now why why they're everywhere because that is now their role and they actually have the evangelism title and I got to give you credit for re, re you know in branding your team that right because that's that's a lot of what needs to be done to to to, to get everybody on board now so uh, excited about that so um, so now we know what your what your team is who your team is and what you're doing uh, maybe we can talk a little bit about kind of the big brand um, uh, services that you guys are supporting, right? Maybe you can just tick us through some of the some of the bigger ones that everybody should be aware of when you're talking about cloud services and what you guys are focused on. Obviously, we've talked about Kubernetes and uh, PKS and what we're doing with PKS. Um, we obviously have VMC and AWS. I don't know if you guys have special, if each one of those have those roles. Uh, but what are the big, big, big ones that you guys are spending most of your time uh, talking about and bringing people along on that journey? Maybe we can touch base on the products that we have out there. No, I'd love to. Um, so uh, the way we think about the, the products is really in, in sort of two buckets right now. Um, the main bucket being really around cloud management and what that constitutes. Um, and there's about four products there that we're, we're, we're regularly engaged with and, and a couple other minor, uh, my, like engaged them from a minor perspective, right? So the ones that we're regularly hitting these days and really kind of working on getting out there is, um, you know, obviously the uh, the recent purchase that we just made in Cloud Health, right? And Cloud Health is uh, just an amazing platform with respect to um, being able to manage resources and costs um, on the public cloud. And, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of history here and then I'll go into the other services, but you know, we, we purchased them last year and just a little bit on Cloud Health. I mean, they, they own or they have, like, you know, a few thousand customers um, that are running on Amazon. And, uh, you know, billions of dollars uh, are being, of, of Amazon spend is being managed through Cloud Health. So it's just an amazing story. 
Uh, it's an amazing team that we've actually purchased and brought in, and it actually gives us one of the strongest footholds that we can have on the public cloud. Um, so we're spending a lot of time in cloud health, and on a couple of different levels, really, we, we are helping um, work with it to you know, kind of evangelize it, but also looking at it to see how we can help extend cloud health to become more of our, our SaaS-based management platform, so to speak, right? Um, and that sort of dovetails into a couple of other services that we're also working with and sort of pushing out uh, under the management sort of umbrella here for SaaS, uh, SaaS-based management on public cloud. Uh, and, the, and the next one is um, uh, VMware uh, Secure State. And that one is not quite fully launched, um, but it is an alpha and or beta right now, sorry. Um, and we're taking on customers, and the equivalent of that out in the market would be, let's say, a competitor to Redlock. Uh, it's better. Uh, I'm not saying that because I'm just VMware, but you know, after playing with it and after the the uh, <clears throat> the redo that they've done over the last year, uh, it is actually a pretty interesting product. And and Secure State is also another acquisition that we had. It's uh, formerly known as Cloud Corio. Um, so we're spending a little bit of time on that, trying to get that out the door. Um, working with our customers to understand some of the issues and um, working on security best practices around uh, the public cloud. Uh, in conjunction with that, um, we also have, uh, you know, part of, let's say, like day two sort of operations, we have uh, another product that we also purchased a company. It's uh, called uh, Wavefront. Uh, we are spending a good amount of time on Wavefront um, on two levels. One, obviously, in just managing resources around Amazon, Azure, or Google. But also, we spent quite a bit of time, my team spends time, in showcasing um, Wavefront with respect to how do you manage an application? How do I understand how uh, you know, MySQL is running inside that application, or Kafka, or you know, how do I connect it to a CICD pipeline, and how do I monitor and manage that? Um, so those are kind of like day two based operational products that we have um, that we're spending quite a bit of time on. Um, in addition to that, we do spend a little bit of time and we are actually um, working with customers that are trying to understand how to do day zero based operations. Uh, we use a lot of Terraform on our own clouds. We, we run about 200 instances across Amazon and Azure right now with uh, multiple applications that we've hand built and we have GitHub pages you can get access to. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, we use Terraform, Ansible, and all that stuff. In addition, we also use, obviously, our own tooling, which we've created to, you know, give a, a consist consistent view from a day zero perspective uh, between, um, you know, the, the hybrid world and vSphere and on Amazon, and that's CAS, right? Uh, and that's composed of three separate services, right? Um, code assembly, uh, code stream, and then we've got um, <clears throat> service broker. So we spend a bit of time on, on those and working with customers that are interested in using those, uh, especially around public cloud. Um, and so that's kind of the, the first set of services that we are focused on. All right, I gotta I gotta we stop you for a second. We have code assembly, code stream on the task base, and the third one was I missed it because I was just I, I missed the third one. Service broker. Service broker. Service broker. Right, right. right. It's funny because I, you know, we we just don't hear much about you know the the day zero stack to get the apps out there, right? And uh, you know, even though I I spent a you know three or four years ago spent a, a good deal of time in CodeStream and what it was and how to work on it, we have so many other products that get the you know the between VMC and AWS and Wavefront and uh, and now Cloud Health. It's like you you forget there is that day zero how to build it and get it get it out there. You have Kubernetes and PKS that's also part of that framework so it's like yeah. oh yeah 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 code stream service guy getting that out there that's that, yeah completely forgot about that stuff in VMware we are serial innovators so this is why the evangelism is so important to explain and to educate yeah absolutely all right sorry to cut you off. I just I just want to catch the third one service broker so I can when I want to ask you some questions I got that down so thanks for that um, so yeah so cloud health wavefront uh, you spent a little time in Terraform. Terraform I missed another one that, that you had you had said cloud health one and then wavefront I didn't catch the other one then day zero you got code assembly code stream service broker and what else you want to talk tell us about from the product perspective um, yeah so um so I guess, you know, no, no, no worries. Uh, feel free to stop any time. <laughs> um, it's, uh, you know, Cloud Health. We have VMware Secure State. That's secure State. One. That was the one, um, right, and then right. Secure State. Yeah, that's a security product. And then uh, Wavefront. Now, 
this sort of day two and day zero based operations around cloud is where we're spending a lot of bit of time. Uh, we also spend, as you've seen Dan come and talk about it, we spend quite a bit of time around cloud PKS, specifically of because it's right. a SaaS-based service. As you notice the theme, we are solely focused around SaaS-based services. Um, uh, we're helping out in cloud PKS, and a lot of our blogs are around containers and using Kubernetes and managing applications. Um, and we also play with EKS, PK, um, uh, GKE, and, and a couple of others to you know uh, understand what the variances are. Uh, so we're focused on that, and we're also supporting a, a new service that's coming out um, that has sort of been announced. Um, it's called um, uh, NSX Service Mesh, right? Uh, and that's basically Istio as a service, um, and that is something that we're also helping support. So that's the kind of the compendium of services that we're mostly focused on these days um, in evangelizing um, outside. Nice. I am, nice. I am looking at the blog posts that you guys have put out, and they are really, really interesting. Very interested in all of the things that you're putting out. Right. And, uh, and just to reiterate that, that blog is www.beyondvirtual.io. Right, so uh, me and Bill have talked about getting uh, getting stuff out quickly to the market. Right, the best way to do it's a blog, and if you want total freedom, go on your own domain so that you can just you know yes. get things done a a as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Build your own plugins, get your stuff out there, and so kudos to you guys for you know operating a blog and getting getting those articles out because they are good. And uh, if you're wondering why they're not on VMware.com, it's because you know you get a blog out there and you get it out fast, and so we support that. So, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll give a little, just a just a big, little bit of spiel on this. I think we, we wanted to, uh, and I think you and I have talked about it, Eric, and we wanted to kind of rebrand a little bit. Uh, one of the purposes of doing that is so that uh, people can find us outside of sort of the bistro realm. Um, and right. that's why it's called Beyond Virtual, because we are <laughs> going beyond the virtual realm. So, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in fact, me and, me, site, yeah. Yeah, yeah, me and you have talked about even, you know, the idea of VMware code gets a little, you know, like even as much as I love VMware code and I wear VMware code apparel half the time, my wife reminds me of that. Um, the idea of VMware in front of code is is kind of like, well, but if you look at cloud health and you look at other things they're going after, they're not just just VMware solid. They're, they're, you can manage other things besides VMware. Space. Well, but, but we also have the advantage that we are any, any cloud, right? We have right. always been about giving the customers the option. Right. So even though a lot of people, especially the older VI admins, will think VMware is not really doing a lot of stuff, I know that we, are, we have developers, we have a lot of people coming out of Stanford and CMU right. that are just doing amazing things that people will see in coming products. So right. we may turn that perception right. around. Yeah, and in, in a real sense, uh, even though our headphones are doing that, we're still, there. everybody's still live. Um, Wavefront is one of these products where it has its own brand, it stands on its own brand, and it doesn't need uh, it doesn't need Wave, VMware in front of it. In fact, automotive industry uses it. Um, uh, you know, we've got a lot of users in uh, you know, like I think Lyft uses it, and some of the other you know uh, ride sharing apps use it. And so, um, what I would say is that uh, yeah, that VMware brand is is nice. We like VMware, but in the real sense, there are people that aren't even in data center services that are actually dealing with that, right? So. Um, yeah, it's 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 interesting. So, Bill, you have uh, we you know we're just cr cruising through the time here. So, I want to get to some of the bullet points that we do have. Uh, so, one of them is uh, some articles that are on the blog. There's a couple that need to be you know that we should shout out. Right, proactive RDS dash CS dash BS. So, you can go to beyond uh, beyondvirtual.io uh, and look. There's a proactive RDS article out there. Uh, which really kind of talks about how how to use cloud health to uh, do your resource management on you know different uh, different cloud providers. I think AWS is one of the ones that we, you talked about because RDS is the 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 database service uh, from uh, AWS. So why don't we talk a little bit about that? Uh, we can drill down into you know. Cloud health. How is cloud health managing um, RDS environments, and what are the, kind of the challenges when you you go out to cloud and you have these services out there running? What are those challenges? And uh, talk a little bit about that article. No, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, when we when we write this, uh, just a little bit of background. When we write some of these articles. We are, um, 
we try to do uh, a little bit of a twist on what the general functions are. Um, and specifically, Cloud Health is also known, you know, in the industry, it kind of gets known for just being a cost and resource sort of management um, product. And what we wanted to do with some of these articles was to show how it really applies to the day-to-day -day operations of actually managing um, applications, right, mm -hmm. and how you can use it in sort of managing that policy, right? Um, you know, if we take developers as we have today, they're going to go into Amazon and, and they're going to load up and run pretty much anything they want at some levels. Um, and if you think about how you manage Amazon, um, there's really two parts of it, right? One is you can be um, preventative. You could actually go in and actually lock down that user's ability to turn on certain AMIs, uh, utilize certain regions utilize only certain uh, types of services, et cetera. And that will get you so far. And as the developers go in, you, you know that they generally try to do weird things, and they will turn on port 22, and they will uh, leave a lot of things on so they can code and develop. And, um, and then you know, also potentially even just run up the cost and the spend. And so the second part of this is not just pre pre preventative, but also then proactive or slash reactive sort of, uh, of, of management. Um, you have to watch for delta changes in the configuration drifts that are occurring, understand where there may be out of, so to speak, a policy that you've come up with, um, and then sort of go after that and try to uh, tamp that down, right? And so what, what the specific article talks about is one of the more, hard, one of the, the more um, used services out there, which is RDS, um, but the fact is that it can get very expensive in using RDS. Um, and generally what you want to do with developers is you want to effectively limit their use, especially in a dev test environment. Production, a whole other story. So, that, so the article really goes around what do you do in a dev test sort of environment where you have developers bringing up applications, tearing them down on a regular basis. And you know, general policy should be that you know, you're going to understand where your cost overruns are or usage um, overruns will be, and you'll set up some sort of a policy. And what Cloud Health allows you to do is to effectively monitor that utilization and the cost, um, and then act on it, depending on, um, uh, I, I don't want to say a violation, but uh, a change in, in that affects that policy, right? So, you know, in, in, in the article, we kind of talk about uh, the fact that, you know, hey, do I have any specific RDS instances in my environment or the environment that I run, uh, that'll spend um, greater than $200 uh, on a monthly basis. And we know that then there's something crazy going on with that application. And what CloudUp will do is actually pull all of your resources, because it has a full inventory of what's happening, right, beyond just cost. It understands, takes that policy and applies it to your accounts, and then gives me an entire list um, and what I did is I specifically narrowed that list down to, let's say, a specific region and said, okay, this is my dev test environment. And once it lists that out, I can have that sort of condition and policy run like every six hours, every 10 minutes, every day. And what I did is I said, okay, let's run this on my own team, right, uh, on a, on a uh, daily basis. And then uh, I created a, uh, a, a, a kind of a, a proactive action on this, which was, if I see something greater than 200, I want you to go and shut that down because I don't want them overrunning the cost or their usage, right? I can change that to usage. Uh, right. and what we did is we created a Lambda function that gets kicked off. But the interesting thing here is that I'm not going to shut that down because what Cloud Hub allows you to do is to have an approver policy on it. It says, before you shut it down, make sure you send Bill an email, and Bill has to approve the shutdown before I, I like Cloud Hub take action on this. I like it. Th these three, that that uh, scenario that you put, that you uh, just showcased, plus the three articles that focus on security, operational costs, and you know identifying inefficiencies, they really are what a lot of people that are just getting into the market are gonna find out real quick that they need to be able to monitor this. Yeah, and and they they find it very hard. I think one of the one of the things about cloud operations, and I'll talk a little bit about this, is that it's a little different from Ariel, from like you know how a lot of us have kind of been brought up, right? On 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 you know installing servers, installing VMs, et cetera, et cetera. 
because the majority of the time that you're going to spend in the cloud now is not about managing those resources, but it's really about managing policy, right? And if you look at the tools that we are sort of coming out with in VMware, right, we're really going down that path as the role of an IT admin now, you know, his, his functions in day-to-day -day really changes around basically um, Dan's coined this term in our team, which is around, uh, you know, uh, gates and, 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 and managing those gates effectively, right? Mm -hmm. um, and ensuring that people don't, you know, put the guardrails on and they don't go out of that guardrail. And you're constantly looping through sort of this closed loop process of, okay, got a de deployment that goes on, I'll set a certain policy, may go out of whack, I get information, I go retool my policy, and I just continuously change. And that's effectively what's happening with a lot of customers that are managing uh, their operations in public clouds. So this is really about a, a, a policy is a loaded term here, right? But there's a lots of layers of policy that effectively gets managed now from a, from a cloud operations uh, perspective. And this is just one aspect yeah. of it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I, I think it also just you know as we, as we drift into AWS and you know you do just have just like VM expansion, right? Like where you know you would you would see this. Everybody got excited about it. All of a sudden, you can spin up VMs when we introduce you know vSphere in the day, and and you have VM expansion, and pretty soon you have like thousand VMs running. Uh, AWS is kind of in that same space, and we all get a little frightened of this, right? Uh, because it is a bill, and it's a hard bill, and and then you know how as a manager do you affect that? How do you how do you control? And and even as an IT guy, you don't want to have management come yell at you for having you know a huge bill and we've had billing issues uh, from the experts along the way and so the, you know cloud health enabling this and having scripting that you can be very controlled on what the pr parameter looks like and then a workflow enablement so you're just not shutting things down because you don't know what to shut down what to keep running uh, so yeah definitely I could see now yeah. cloud health and don't forget mm -hmm. that this is a common story so managers are looking for this kind of dashboard to make sure that they you right. know, they can respond for right them. and if you try to convince me to use a AWS for more things, I think I would have to have this in place, right? To approve like, okay, let's, because the problem isn't what I'm paying for, it's that I'm using, it's what I'm paying for that I'm just not using. And you know, VMworld was this way where we spun up, you know, we went into AWS and we spun up like 10 additional bigger servers to handle the load of uh, VMworld during the event, right? And then, you know, nobody goes in and shuts it all down. And then it's like, three months later you go like well how come i'm what happened to this budget right and and then then you say hey did why do we even those running and they go oh sorry we just didn't really think about it and so it's just like you're just managing those services makes you comfortable to continue to, to operate them correctly Correct. right yeah so, so that's a great article, uh, which uh, is, again, on uh, beyondvirtual.io. If you say it eight times, you start to believe it. So we just have to say it a few more times, and we're good. Then uh, you have another one that I, I got to ask. It's uh, the, the, zombie, the zombie article that's out there that's kind of in the same realm of using cloud health to manage zombies. And, and for me, zombies, you know, I go back to Linux and Unix, my Unix days, where zombie was errant processes. Is, are we using zombie in the same way with, with that article? Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Bill? Um, yeah, it's pretty similar. I mean, I think it goes back to either that example on Linux or the previous example that you used about, you know, you guys spinning up a bunch of instances and then not realizing that they're still out there, right? Um, <clears throat> just running idle, right? And that's really what is on the instances in, in Amazon. It's uh, an idle that maybe a developer has brought up, utilized for a certain time frame, and it's just, underutilized because it's sitting there because as normal most developers will probably not shut down their instances or terminate them um, and what this article does is it takes a little bit of a different take on um, sort of like that RDS blog by looking out for how do I go manage my zombie instances and those zombie instances are the ones that are running idle that should probably be shut down um, or terminated even right and in a similar fashion, we, we kind of walk through how you can do this in cloud health. But the interesting thing that we also look through is the policy, right, and or the procedure. You know, you don't want to go do this. Um, you, you don't want to just in um, uh, quickly go and just try to shut something down or terminate it. What we do do is we, you know, we should talk about how cloud health will actually detect these based on the fact that it's pulling information um, from not just Amazon 
but it's pulling information from other sources. So we actually hooked up Wavefront to Cloud Health, and it's using Wavefront data to effectively understand which one of our instances that are running on our Amazon accounts are below, let's say, a 5% utilization on over a two-week time frame, right? And that tells us these are potentially zombie instances. And then the process that we talk through is, well, the first thing we're going to do is we, we set up a Lambda function that effectively goes in and takes a snapshot immediately. And then the next couple of procedures is send an email to the admin to either talk to the developer to go shut it down, right, or terminate it or have them start using it again effectively, right? Um, but the, po the process of actually taking a snapshot is to understand that you've got a snapshot in time in case you do terminate and for some reason they understand that they want to have that back at some point. You at least have a backup, right, which is almost never thought about uh, in a lot of cases in Amazon. Uh, there is inherent just uh, a sense of going out and terminating as much as possible. Um, as an example, you know, we use Cloud Health across um, uh, uh, VMware, by the way, right, for all, all right. of our Amazon spend that we do. But IT itself doesn't shut down our instances, but I do get calls on a regular basis, right? <laughs> hey, you know, some of these things have been running for a long time, and we know that they're working. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is another policy and procedure that goes down to the fact of how am I now managing the Amazon? And the zombie instance is just one of the most rampant uh, <clears throat> cost problems that are out there um, for um, uh, customers using right. Amazon right. nowadays. You know, yeah. it's just their cost runs uh, yeah, yeah. out the door. That's a it's a cute it's a cute way to use zombie because it's not really it's not a process it's the whole machine and it's idle time on the whole machine and it's like yeah we got machines out there that we spun up and all of a sudden they're, you know the load balancer's not even routing traffic to them anymore so they're just sitting there as a zombie right a zombie machine you know billing me right because the machine is booted right mm -hmm. so therefore I get the bill and so that yeah that's brilliant that's mm -hmm. brilliant AWS doesn't charge based on load on the on the machines either I think it's just whether the machine spun up or not right. Right in the in the uh, in the instance, and so yeah, you get the bill. So that's it's it's brilliant. Well, well, yeah. yes and what no. What happens Am with wrong you, uh, it's just that it, right. it's. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah, I'm just listening. Hello. Oh yeah, uh, no, yeah. So it's you know we talked about EC2, but we are going to release another one about the fact that even though the EC2 may be going idle and and uh, depending on the size of the instance that you're running, it could be very low. One of the things you take play to, that takes effect with respect to Amazon is that everything is interconnected in Amazon. There is actually a model within whatever you deploy. So that EC2 instance is, is attached to an EBS volume, just like we have on, on vSphere, right, et cetera. Um, so there are other components to actually consider. And in another blog that we'll be releasing, I probably was actually writing that one, um, and probably wrote this one on zombie, zombie uh, instances, um, we'll talk about how to find those those uh, uh, EBS volumes, and then you know there's other components like uh, security groups and other stuff which you don't get charged for, but also need a lot of cleanup, right? That are out right. there. Right, right. That makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, can't say enough about the beyondvirtual.io blog because it's got categories for lots of different articles and uh, really good articles that, that are not just about VMware. And, and right. just knowing the people that are in this team, I just know that it's going to be a great blog to follow. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, we're coming up to the near top of the hour. We did get a little late start, so we're still, we still probably have 10 more minutes left. But uh, so you guys, uh, uh, I know you we're, we're scheduling some meetups with your team as well. So you're going to cover some of these topics and we're doing, we're doing uh, for VMware code. We're going to do live meetups. Um, we have our own meetup group on VMware code. So shout out to Kripa and crew for building our, our own meetup group. So if you haven't followed the VMware code meetup group yet, go check that out. Uh, you can do it. You can join that, uh, and then you'll get notifications on when we're doing live streams with slides. So part of doing this with Bill today is that we get our act together on how to grab somebody's desktop, grab their picture, do a live stream. Uh, so much like AWS, a developer program where they have, you know, live streams going on throughout the quarter. We're going to be doing the same thing. And about half of your team has signed up to do various meetups. So pretty excited about that. And uh, and I'm sure that we'll drive it, d drill into some of these uh, topics that are on beyondvirtual.io um, and, uh, and, and, and take you on some of that. So when you're looking at 20, uh, 2019, I know we were with you guys uh, 
Bill at AWS reInvent. Um, we're doing some cool stuff with uh, with you at VMworld. Are you guys going to be other places spreading the message? Do you have on top of mind where else you're going to be, or is it uh, or is that a loaded question and you have no idea? <clears throat> well. <laughs> No, we do know. We're starting to get our CFPs ex uh, um, uh, accepted. We are uh, putting in CFPs in multiple different conferences. Right. Um, and so they're slowly starting to be accepted. So right now we just finished one recently, uh, Hashi Talks was one of them. We just did the 24 hours of Hashi Talks. Um, so on the site we will actually post the YouTube videos of um, uh, Tim had done one and uh, Shri had done one, and, and that's around CICD. Uh, and I think one is around specifically um, Terraform. You take an application and terraform it, right? Because uh, it's HashiCorp. Um, we'll be doing some of that. We are, are looking at getting into obviously KubeCon. Uh, we're of looking course. at being mm -hmm. at Velocity. We will uh, look at being at uh, Jenkins World <clears throat> um, uh, Spinnaker Summit. That is yet to be determined on what the time frame is, uh, and, and, a, and a host of others. Obviously, uh, Amazon definitely. We are at Google mm -hmm. Next. We will be talking. Uh, we're still sorting through what that will be, but yes. Yeah, so we will put up a calendar on there. By the way, um, Eric, I mean we are linking our site with yours, so don't worry. I mean you know, there's links already popping up on the bottom of our site that sure. pushes us back to code also. So we're going to connect the two as we can because you know, it is yeah. kind of free flowing between all the information up there. Uh, so that's kind of the how we're going to disseminate that and what, where we're going right now. And we'll, uh, we'll keep iterating on that. And the watch for the calendar on Beyond Virtual. We'll be putting that out shortly in the next week or two. I, re I really like to see this collaboration with the VMT and communities team because um, obviously the VMware code has been very successful. And I know that the VMUGs are also interested in getting more code related yep. topics. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a, 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 a user con in Pittsburgh where I'm from or where I live. Um, that we, I, I would love to have like Pravo come in and spend some time talking about b before a hackathon event right. or something like that. Yeah. So, yep, uh, we did have Brad, the head of v Absolutely. Yeah, um, we did have Brad mm -hmm. uh, Tompkins come uh, talk. We've had several meetings. We're spinning up code events. I think we've committed to four code events at uh, user cons, which I've mentioned. Um, and then just you know, getting uh, Bill Shetty is just all over all the stuff we're doing, right? So I'm aware of that, and we've plugged him into you know getting that, getting him out, and getting their team out into the uh, user cons as part of that, uh, getting the sessions out, uh, doing the meetups. Uh, but then, uh, Bill, thanks for taking us through the the roadmap of places that you're going to be also, and where to go find that. So so that's awesome. Um, our, and I guess. I just in the top of my head here, like, um, how are we doing with regard to um, mind share of cloud management services? I, I looked at, are we were the number one vendor tweeted during AWS reInvent, right? So uh, AWS uh, talked about that, that, you know, like they were the number one that, because they're Amazon, right? They, they, get, they got more, of the, but then we were number two. We were the biggest vendor. So how do you, how is your, how's your feeling with regard to like getting, you know, this hybrid environment? I know where we were at Think at IBM last week, right? where we were talking about some of the various things. And I know a lot of your tools do multi-cloud, cross-cloud. Uh, how are you feeling with regard to getting traction as, as a cloud management solution stack? Uh, I think it's, it's coming together. Uh, it's definitely getting a lot of traction. Uh, I think we have to thank Cloud Health for that. I mean, they had the presence to really bring us forward on, um, on reInvent, right? In addition, obviously, we have to thank you know, BMC, Right. I mean, I think between those two components, you know, I think we get a lot of presence over there. But as we start um, working more and more with Cloud Health and sort of integrating with some of their backend processes and everything, um, you know, like you said, I mean, Wavefront has its own presence. We'll start integrating some of these, and it will become a lot more um, fluid, right, over time. Uh, we're pretty excited about that. We're getting a lot of uptake on that. Um, you know, uh, discussions with customers on Cloud Health. You know, right. Go to security, or go to someplace else. So um, uh, it's all sort of interconnected, and, and um, it's starting to form right now. Um, I would say that I, I think we have a great base to build off of right now. Um, and I, I do want to make sure that we understand that it is not just about public cloud, but you know, like you said, Ariel, it is also going to be about hybrid and then getting that continuity. Um, so you know, we're looking forward to highlighting. Um, all the public cloud components, but we will on occasion talk about 
all of the components on the other side, on the hybrid side too, right? Um, and it, we hope that, you know, with these SaaS services, uh, because we can deliver these so quickly and the changes that customers want can, can be delivered uh, rapidly, that they would choose our platform now, right, you know, uh, right. to utilize for uniformity across wherever it is, right? And right. so that it, it's about choice. And so it, it's a journey, and, and we're really happy with where we're starting from right now. Yeah. Uh, so I think that this is going to be a good next nine months as we start coalescing yeah. and moving forward even more rapidly. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple thoughts that I think of when I when they, one is this reminds me of the NSX days, right? Where, you know, we, we had a great vision and the products weren't there yet. We couldn't get all the products out where we wanted to the V experts uh, because NSX was, we were still cleaning up a lot of things and there was, but you could see the vision and you could see it coming. Then we did NSXT for the telcos and, and all of a sudden, you know, you'd look at now Mobile World Congress and we're just now two or three years later, we're like a force. Uh, so that's one. And I feel like this is the same thing we're getting all the pieces together now i was talking to my vp yesterday and my one-on-one about like our 2019 investments uh we've got some really cool things for vmworld we're doing we're gonna take over the uber uber the uber uber uh, buena center for performing arts for vmware code we're gonna brand the whole thing this is where apple did their launches so it's gonna be coming out like and we we're talking about the fact that like Three years ago, we didn't have these products. We didn't have enough that we could say, like, look, this is the whole end, end point from application building all the way into, into production and delivery to management of your apps in a dynamic way in multi-cloud environments. But we're actually getting those pieces together. And so that's the one thought is, like, it's pretty exciting because we're, we're now, you know, we're coming into our NSX days where we're building and we have enough that it's cool. The second thing that, 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 that I hit here, and then I'll be quiet, but it's like um, you don't have to outrun the bear, right? The old, out, out, you just have to outrun your, your competitors who are doing it because you need to do this. You need these solutions. And then I look around and I go like, we're running as fast as we can to build all this because, you know, we, this is what we do. We're running, right? But then I look around and I go like, we're like, a, you know, a mile ahead of anybody else behind us, right? Like if the bear is going to eat somebody, it's not going to be, we're, we're, we're doing really well in this space. In fact, we've got more solutions in this and more real meat on the ground, multi-cloud, multi-services, IBM, AWS, even Microsoft now coming along. Um, so it's it just like the NSX matured into like, look, this is a no-op. These guys are the default standard in this. I see us you know, being able to say that at some point too because we're just so far ahead of everybody else. This is why evangelism programs are so important, but I think we have a great track record that our evangelism is spot on. Like when we tell them this is going to be big, it turns out to be big. Yeah. So people trust us in that yeah. sense. Yeah, that's right. And we do good software, right? Yes. And, uh, and we make good acquisitions and we transition into new markets. I, I, I look back at the Sun days when I worked at Sun and Sun didn't know how to transition to anywhere, right? Like they, they couldn't get their head into a new market, right? Where VMware is amazing at get, you know figuring out what a new market is, getting people aligned, buying the necessary technology, building solutions for our customer base. We act as you know IT partners, right? So, so Bill, it's uh, fantastic to see you great to be on your show looking forward to having uh, your evangelist team on they have been all over with us and so we're excited about 2019 thanks for being here thanks for doing this and uh, thanks for spending money being in the evangelist space as a whole i, I love you your team dan uh, everybody that's there is it's great so thanks for thanks for joining us right now and, and thanks for all the support so far we were looking forward to working with with your team and, and all the other events that are coming up, and uh, it's going to be a fun year. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Awesome. And, and, awesome. and yeah, being in the community, everybody's excited about it. So thanks a lot. Uh, we are going to have uh, uh, next week, I think, V experts get, get announced. If they're on schedule, we'll have some V experts come in and talk through the process. We got a couple of people queued up for that. Uh, and, and, and then we are going to have uh, some, more, some more of Bill's teams in. So we got a full year coming up. So it should be a podcast every week. Uh, and so thanks, uh, everybody, for being on Facebook and uh, checking us out and living with the way we're doing 
uh, slides and uh, video. So Julia, thanks a lot. We don't have a camera on you, but we're going to get one on you too, so you can be part of the crew. And uh, until then, uh, everybody uh, have a great week. And then we'll do a, uh, we didn't do the color of the bay, but I would just say that uh, whatever the color is, it's all fresh water because we had uh, up in uh, north of San Francisco, we had 20 inches of rain. Uh, so it's almost two feet of rain in an overnight period. So uh, if there's any salt water left in the bay, I think you would be hard pressed to find it. So And they did ask us on the barbecue, and I think Wondernet said the barbecue report, he had crab rangu on the grill. That's crab right. rangu on the grill. Darn. That sounds great. I'm, I'm still looking for the Brussels sprouts, dude. Uh, but uh, again, thanks a lot for everybody. I We're know. Yeah, yeah, there you go, Tony. Crab rangu, what is that exactly? So the uh, crab rangu that you get at uh, Chinese restaurants, Okay. You can make your own. Oh, oh, oh yeah. right, right, right. Five so the crispy three. crab, you know, golden colored, you know, uh -huh. and you did that on the grill. Any good? I, I did it on the grill. It was awesome. Um, Very nice. My, my, my wife liked it so much that uh, I think I only got one of them. <gasps> wow. I about six. I'm awesome. hungry. Oh. So. It's at the top of the hour. We're going to head over to the cafeteria and see what they've got. Uh, Bill, good to see you again as always. Uh, Ariel, thanks for being here. It's just good to see Thank you in you the guys. same room with us. It's always it's always great. One thing on Bill, if you want to follow him on Twitter, at S-H-E-T-T-I. Did I get it right? You got it right. Awesome. All right. Thank at you. Shetty. Perfect. All right, with that, we're going to end the call. Thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll see you again next week. Until then, have a great day. Thank you. Yeah. Now I have to see how many applications I have to close here on my Mac to actually end. <laughs>